So one of the most common questions that my patients ask is what is the difference between IVF and ICSI? Hello everyone, I am Dr. Sumi Peter Maria. I am the consultant and infertility specialist at Millen Fertility Center, New Delhi. So here I'll be telling you in detail about IVF and ICSI and what are the conditions that you really need to go ahead with ICSI and what are the conditions that you can try IVF as well with. So when IVF was introduced in 1978, it was only pure IVF. So what does that mean? So IVF is a procedure where in a culture dish, you put a mature oocyte and you put at least 50,000 to 1 million sperms and the normal natural interaction that happens between an egg and a sperm happens inside a culture dish and the most competent sperm makes its way into the egg and causes fertilization. So it mostly resembles a natural process where there are a lot of sperms around the egg and the best competent sperm will find its way inside and cause fertilization. So that is IVF process. Now what is ICSI? So ICSI is intracytoplasmic sperm injection. So as the word suggests, this was introduced in 1991 for male factor in infertility. Now what is this? So like I said, there are a lot of sperms around the egg and the most competent one finds its way, its way inside. Now what happens in ICSI? So your embryologist selects the most competent sperm that he feels is able to fertilize the egg and injects this inside the oocyte so that the fertilization ha process happens and then there is no reason or no space for failed fertilization. So these are the indications for ICSI where sometimes your male factor is very severe that you cannot get 50,000 to 1 million sperms which are processed to be used for IVF. In such cases, we have to resort to ICSI where the sperm count or the quality of the sperms are quite less and we have to go ahead only with ICSI. Now, what are the conditions that is an absolute indication for ICSI? And is ICSI the only way ahead or are we using ICSI a lot? So recently the ASRM has come up with their new guideline in which they have clearly mentioned the uses of ICSI in non-male factor uh, conditions. So as I said, in male factor, whenever your male partner has a problem with the count or the motility or the quality of the sperms are quite affected, what happens is that the number of sperms that can be used for a normal IVF process is less and we need to choose among the best of the sperms to cause fertilization. So what are the other indications? So routinely now ICSI has been used for everyone, ICSI for all. ICSI has been used for unexplained infertility, ICSI has been used for advanced maternal age, it's ICSI for a lot of other causes. So is it actually necessary? So yes, ICSI has got certain indications where we say yes, ICSI is the way ahead. So the first thing, like I said, is male factor. Now second thing is where you have had a previous fertilization failure, the best thing to go ahead will be to use ICSI. The other conditions like pre-implantation genetic testing. So if you're doing a genetic testing of the embryo, it will be better that we prevent the contamination of multiple sperms and we choose one sperm for the fertilization process that so that the contamination can be neg uh, negated. Now there are other conditions like in vitro maturation of oocytes. So in vitro maturation of oocytes is a process where we take immature oocytes, culture them outside, make them mature and then do the fertilization. So in this condition also the chances of failed fertilization is a bit high. So to prevent that, we use conditions, in such conditions, we use the ICSI process so that we minimize the incidence of failed fertilization. Now for other conditions like advanced maternal age, is ICSI indicated? Not really. And in other conditions also like uh, unexplained infertility, there are a lot of studies which says that it can be effective but then again the ASRM has come up with the opinion saying that it might not be. Also, 
the proper indication for ICSI will always remain male factor and what are the other conditions will be again plus or minus and that will be decided by your physician and by your embryologist. So this is what you need to understand the difference between IVF and an ICSI. Uh, thank you for watching my video and if you found my video really helpful, please don't forget to click the like button and also subscribe to our channel Milan the Fertility Specialist so that you can be updated about all the videos which are coming ahead in which we will be handling and dealing with each condition specifically and uh, also dealing with all your queries. For any further assistance, you can also come and visit me in our hospital at uh, Greater Kalash Part 2 New Delhi, Milan the Fertility Centre. Thank you very much. Hope you have a very nice day. Thank you.